In some of my previous videos, I shared how to put together this loom, which is Schacht's Cricut Quartet. It's a conversion that takes your rigid heddle loom into a four shaft table loom. And it's been super interesting to work with. I've really enjoyed working with it so far. And I'm working on some videos to show how I put the warp together, how I plan the warp, all those fun things. And I realized when I was doing my editing that I had left out a few steps. So I'm working on filling in those gaps for you and making sure that you've got all this information about how I'm putting together and putting on my warps onto this loom because it is a little bit different than a rigid heddle loom. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to ask a chat bot, chat GPT, or one of those um, AI text generators, how to use a warping board is where I started. And the results are entertaining and I thought I would share them with you. So here we go. So the first thing I asked it was, how do you use a warping board? And that's kind of an open-ended question for the AI. So it said, a warping board is a helpful tool used in weaving to create a warp yarn that is evenly sized and tensioned. That's true. That doesn't tell me anything about how to use it. It tells me what it is. Okay. To use a warping board, first measured out the desired length of warp yarn. So I think what they're saying is you need to measure out your guide string so that you know exactly how much you're going to, what your length of your warp is going to be. Tie the warp yarn to the pegs on the board in a figure eight pattern, wrapping the yarn around each peg twice. So there's two steps in there and neither of them really makes sense to me. So first it says to tie the warp yarn to the pegs on the board in a figure eight pattern. Now, technically it looks like a giant figure eight, but, and what they're describing in the figure eight is the cross that keeps each thread organized. So if you think of my fingers as individual threads, they would stay organized in that cross and it makes an X. And that's that intersection of the figure eight that it's talking about but it doesn't really explain how to get that. And that is a challenge, I think, for new weavers. So if you're asking how to do it, this isn't gonna give you much help. And then it says wrapping the yarn around each peg twice. So this would assume a board that, a warping board that maybe only has two pegs. And most warping boards have many more than two pegs. And it also, that would put the, if you only had two pegs, which you could do, you would put the cross in the center and usually you want the cross pushed to either the beginning or the end. So you would need at least two more pegs to make that work, but then you'd have four pegs. And if you're wrapping around each peg twice, is that like a circle around each peg twice? Or is that, like, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, I could see like wrapping around in like a spiral pattern or some other crazy pattern that would make really disastrous results. So ignore that. Once the desired length of warp yarn is secured to the board, you can use it to measure out the same length of warp yarn for the remaining warp threads. That's true. Um, it doesn't really describe how it's done, but okay. This makes it easier to ensure even tension and size throughout the warp. That's true, but there's a significant operator skill in keeping that tension. You're keeping that tension even with your body and the, the board is just holding it as you put it on. So that kind of leaves out some essential information there. After I got this answer to how do you use a warping board from the AI, it gave this to me in paragraph form. It's very open-ended, it's not very helpful. It's got some true things, it's got some things that are just not true at all. 
Then I asked it, what are 10 steps to using a warping board? A lot of times when we're dealing with these AI text generators, they're telling us to be as specific as possible. So I said, what are the 10 steps? And it gave me 10 steps. The first step it gave me was soak your yarn in water for about 20 minutes, then squeeze out the excess. I've never heard of doing that. I can think of maybe one situation where you might want to warp with a damp yarn, and that might be linen or some other fragile fiber that's actually stronger when it's wet. Linen is one of the very few fibers that's stronger when it's wet. And some people find that linen is easier to control when it's wet. But most warps, you would not get wet before you weave with them. You just don't. Um, you might put a sizing on them or some kind of starch to make it stronger. Again, you wouldn't use it wet though. The second step it says is to tie a slip knot around one of the pegs on the warping board. Okay. Wrap the yarn around the other pegs in the desired pattern. So this is more clear than the figure eight pattern. However, it's kind of, the desired pattern kind of sounds like the pattern of the fabric or the pattern of the colors. It's not really clear. I'm not really sure what it's telling me to do. What, what it really should be saying is in the desired path to get the yardage that you want for your warp. Number four, secure the yarn at the other end with a second slip knot. Okay, not necessarily the knot I would choose, but that's splitting hairs. Number five, cut the yarn, leaving a few inches of slack. So you're gonna cut, you, if you're tying a guide string, which is what I think they're describing here, then yeah, you're gonna tie it on, you're gonna wind it the desired length to get your warp, and then you're gonna tie it at the end and you're gonna cut it off. And then that's gonna stay there and it's gonna guide you so you can trace basically as you're warping. It's really only helpful for the first few yards or the first few passes. I usually leave this step out unless I've got a very precise length that I need and I'm not following a normal path on the warping board. Okay. So we've tied our guide string, but they're not really telling us that, that that's what that's for. Then this is where it starts to get really interesting. It says, number six, tie the two ends together with an overhand knot. The only knot that I would suggest at this point is to tie another knot to secure your actual warp to the warping board so that you can start warping. So I usually make a loop with an overhand knot and just slide that onto the first peg, but I don't know what two ends, to tie the two ends together with an overhand knot. I don't know what two ends they're talking about. And then number seven, it says, tie another knot a few inches away from the first knot. Again, makes no sense. Then it says, number eight, measure the warp and make sure it is the desired length. So if you set up your guide string, if that's what we were talking about, then it is the desired length. And now you're just repeating over and over and over again, winding the warp ends onto the warping board. Uh, number nine, carefully remove the warp from the warping board. So you do, when you're done, carefully remove the warp from the warping board, but they missed a couple steps, which is to tie your choke ties, to tie off your cross. It, some people like to tie additional ties in other places that I usually tie at the very beginning and the very end, just to kind of make sure I know exactly where that turn is. So maybe that's what number six and number seven might've been, but then that doesn't make sense with number eight being measuring out the warp. So I'm, I'm, I'm at this point very lost. And then number 10, 
tie the warp securely to the loom and begin weaving. Well, you do attach the warp to the loom. This is leaving out slaying the reed, threading the heddles, winding it onto the back beam, tying it onto the apron rod, whatever order you warp in, whether it's front to back or back to front, that's all encompassed in tie the warp securely and begin weaving. So it's nowhere near that simple. And if I were following these instructions as a first time weaver, I would be hating weaving and I'd be hating myself and I'd be hating whoever wrote these instructions. So I guess AI isn't going to be teaching us how to weave anytime soon. However, I do have some videos coming up showing the whole process from start to finish. And so if you think those would be helpful, definitely check those out. I would also recommend Peggy Osterkamp's Winding a Warp and Using a Paddle. It has some really detailed tips and tricks that you would not find anywhere else. So very helpful. I'm still learning from it. Every time I go in there, I find something new that helps me. And if you want something more basic, learning to weave, and you'll either see the author's name is Debbie Redding or Debbie Chandler, same author, just name change. Uh, this is the book that I learned from. It tells you how to do it with no nonsense. Highly recommend. So check out these books, check out my videos when they come up. Don't listen to the AI and have fun weaving. Catch you later.